Fractions are used to express numbers. They serve a role similar to the one that is served by the decimals. Compared to decimals, fractions offer some additional mathematical flexibility. For example, the number 0 0.25 can be represented by a few different fractions, such as 1 fourth, 2 a's, or 25 over 100. The top part of the fraction is referred to as the numerator, and the part that sits below the line is called the denominator. We can maintain the fraction or the value of the fraction if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. As a result, we'll get uh, another fraction that is proportional to the earlier fraction. And proportional means equivalent or equal. So in the earlier case, we looked at how 1 fourth is the same as 2 eighths and the same as 25 out of 100. But let's look at another example. So if we take 1 over 2, we can change it into 40 over 80 by multiplying both the numerator, the number above the, the line, and the denominator, the one below the line, by the number 40. So 1 half equals to 40 out of 80. Different look, same value. When dealing with fractions, you would be most often expected to simplify them. Simplifying means dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, also known as common factor, until it cannot be done so any longer. For example, if at the end of our calculations, we arrive at the fraction of 40 over 80 to represent the solution, we should keep dividing by common factor until we can no longer do so. We may, for example, recognize that any number with a zero at the end can be divided by 10. So let's, for example, divide by 10, both 40 and 80. As a result, we would get 4 over 8. Then we should look for the next common factor. So a number that we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by. And we may recognize that both of these numbers can be divided by 4. And this way, we would arrive to 1 half, which can no longer be divided by any common factor other than 1, which at the end is not changing our final fraction. So 1 half is the simplified version of 40 over 80. And since it has the smallest numbers that are equivalent to the original fraction, this is normally considered to be a more acceptable uh, form of expressing a fraction. During simplification, don't feel the pressure to go for the largest possible common factor. Sometimes taking shorter steps is faster than looking for that biggest possible number to divide both the numerator and the denominator by. When dealing with fractions, the next most important thing to know is how to perform uh, different operations. The operation of multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. While adding and subtracting are very similar, and we'll get to this a little later, let's start with the process of multiplication. Multiplication is a rather straightforward process. When multiplying two fractions, we should multiply both numerators and both denominators and keep them in the same spot. So for example, if we multiply two thirds by the three fifths, that would equal two. Numerator two times numerator three equals six, and that goes in the numerator. And three times five equals 15, and that goes into the denominator. So straight up multiplication uh, is how we perform this operation. At this stage of six over 15, of course, we're always should be looking to simplify. In this case, number three is the one that we can divide both 6 and 15 by. And as a result, we will get 2 out of 7. The reason it is important to simplify is that if you don't simplify, one of the answers may not be as easily recognizable to you because the test takers at the SAT 
like to give you unfamiliar looks. Division has some elements that are close to multiplying, but it also has an additional step. That step is the very first step. When dividing one fraction by another fraction, the second fraction, the one that is being divided by, should be flipped. And then we perform multiplication of that flipped form of the second fraction. So for example, if we're dividing 2 thirds by 3 fifths, the 3 fifths fraction needs to be flipped and uh, then multiplied by the first fraction. So what we get is 2 over 3 times the flipped version of 5 over 3. Or it's also called the reciprocal form of the fraction. So at the next stage, what we get is 2 times 5 divided by 3 times 3, and that would equal to 10 over 9. When adding or subtracting fractions, we need to bring both fractions involved to a common denominator. So let's demonstrate. 2 over 3 plus 3 over 5. We cannot directly add 2 and 3 in the numerator like we would when multiplying. Our first step is to bring both fractions to a form where they would have a shared denominator. That denominator in this case would be 15. So if we multiply 3, the denominator of the first fraction, by 5, we get to 15. And of course, we need to perform the same operation in the numerator to protect our fraction. So as a result, we would get 10 over 15. And the second fraction would also have the denominator of 15, but for that, we would need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3. That way, what we get is 10 plus 3 times 3 in the numerator of the second fraction equals 9 and the common denominator would be 15 because the first fraction was brought up to this denominator and the second fraction was also brought up to the denominator of 15. As a result, we would get 19 over 15. Mostly, it is preferred that you bring both denominators to the lowest common denominator. But if uh, this operation gives you too much trouble, bringing to any common denominator would be just fine. And the easiest way sometimes is to multiply the denominator of the first number by the denominator of the second number and do the reverse in the second case. So that's the simplest way to arrive at the common denominator. But a lot of times that might be a number that is too large. So if you can find a lower common denominator, it's always preferred, but this is still an option. And now let's look at subtracting. Let's uh, consider the case of 1 minus 3 fifths. You may notice that 1 is not exactly a fraction, but we can easily put it into the fraction form. So the fraction form for 1 is any number divided by itself. So for example, 5 over 5 is the same as 1. And this is a preferred form for this particular problem since the second fraction has the denominator of 5. If we do so, what we get is 5 over 5, which equals to 1, minus 3 over 5. And once we have the common denominator, then we just perform the operation in the numerator, which is 5 minus 3 equals 2. So 2 goes into the numerator and our denominator remains as 5. Now let's consider how we can separate a fraction, and we may need to do so uh, during solutions that we may face. So separating during multiplication is such that either one of the pieces or either one of the factors can inherit the denominator. And then the other piece or the other factor just remains without a denominator. So for example, if 2x times 5 over 3, we want to separate, what we can get is assign the denominator 
to the 2x, in which case it would be 2x over 3 times 5, and 5 would not get any denominator. Or we can assign the divided by 3 part to 5. And what we would get is 2x times 5 over 3. Separating a fraction when adding or subtracting in the numerator is different. In this case, both pieces in the numerator inherit the denominator. So for example, 2x plus 5 divided by 3 equals to 2x over 3 plus 5 over 3.